Hello guys, it is Patrick here, Agnot Poker. So we are on our final part, three out of three for C betting. So what we're gonna do today, I suppose I better get the jargon out of the way and just say thank you to everyone who's been uh, liking, subscribing, joining the Discord. We're uh, recruiting more acolytes and we're getting bigger every day, which is nice. Um, getting close on the way to getting a thousand subs on YouTube, we're only a couple of hundred away now, which is quite exciting, so that's pretty fun. Um, so Jen, just massive thank you again to everybody. Um, this is the last segment for the C betting strategy videos, and then we're going to be jumping into the um, the multiple stakes series. So we're going to be going from ten and L up to hundred, which is something we did before. Uh, I'm not going to do two and L and five and L because we've done loads of content uh, for that for the micro stakes series, which we will get back to maybe in a week or two's time. But we're going to be um, moving on to those normal stakes uh, for future content. So keep an eye out for that. So just as a quick recap for anyone who hasn't seen number one and two, the link is in the description below for um, parts one and two. Do check those out before you um, come on to this final segment. So what we're going to do with part three then is we're going to be basically focusing on two things. First of all, we're going to be looking at um, how to actually study C betting for yourself. So I'm going to show you um, a piece of software that you can get. You can start off with it for free. And if you want to purchase different parts of it, you absolutely can. We'll look at that in a minute. And then we're going to be using um, using that piece of software, I suppose, to be looking at lots of uh, different examples. We're going to be doing a bunch of single raise pot scenarios and most uh, um, mostly single raise and then a couple of three bet pot scenarios where we're going to be focusing on um, flop C betting. We're not going to be focused on delayed C betting. We're not going to be facing donks. We're not going to be double barreling. We're just focusing on flop C betting for today. That's all we're going to be. That's all we've been focusing on primarily for this um, whole presentation is flop C betting. Uh, for the most part, single raise, but I'll add in a couple of three bet pot spots as well because I know a few of you guys um, have asked for that and you want to have a look at some. So we will have a look. Okay. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm hoping we can get this one done in roughly sort of 30 minutes. Um, I will do my best. But again, this is an educational series. So a little bit more blabber, but a lot more information, hopefully viable information to take in completely for free. So I hope you. Um, Hope you enjoy this one. Um, I'm not going to lie, what I would suggest is before you start, to get the most out of this slide compared to the first two, if I, I would highly recommend, and I will give you the opportunity in between each hand, to take a minute to pause and think about what you actually think you should do in each scenario before we actually look at the answers and sort of to talk about them. Because this, what I want you guys to get out of this video, especially this third one, is to actually have a go for yourself and think about what you might do but rather than just sort of going afk and just watching and sort of falling asleep okay so that's what i might suggest for this one so remember from the previous segments we were looking at a um a lot of different reasons and thought processes for c betting so i'm not going to go into we've, we've already watched loads of that on part one and two but just a few reminders all right just think about who's got the best hand think about who's got the um overall advantage of hands how many pieces of that range affect the board from villain and hero in each situation you know it the, you've got to look at the um positions on the board you, uh, sorry the positions on the table and the board texture as well so just have if just keep in mind and remind yourself of what some of those thought process and requirements are before you start sort of making random guesses try to make educated guesses that make sense and have logic and strategy behind them when you're thinking about your seat betting anyway so Let's have a look at some, um, well, before we have a look at some examples, let's have a look at what we actually use to study some examples. So this is the last sort of slide, as it were, for the presentation, and then we'll do some example spots. So, <coughs> excuse me, what I use and what I've been using for the last sort of 18 months, which has absolutely skyrocketed, not only my uh, win rate, but my ability to even generate a good win rate, honestly, is just GTO Wizards. I know there are other... Um, solver equipment there are lots of different tools there's some really good coaching stuff out there there's a lot of stuff you can do but what i've personally been using is a gto wizard which is just absolutely fantastic you can uh, there's a link below uh, this isn't a sales pitch right but there's a link below to the uh, gto wizard down in the description so also check that out but what i've been using if i can load this up um I suppose it would be good, wouldn't it, if you could actually see what's going on. Uh, give me one second. I don't want to see flop solutions. I want to see preflop. So, um, GTO Wizard. I will probably adjust this so you can actually see it on the screen because I know my ugly mug is in the way out of some of this. 
I've gone, I, I did a previous video on how to use GTA Wizard, which is also in the description below. But just generally, when we're thinking about not only seabedding, but everything, we're looking, we're looking about ranges, we're thinking about um, sizings, we're thinking about what hands to open a three bet, blah, 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 blah. All of this can be found out. Not, I don't want to say, oh, the answers are here, because that's not how poker works. But you can absolutely start studying and answering questions for yourself um, using this piece of information. Um, so, GTO Wizard. What is GTO Wizard? So, basically, GTO Wizard is um, a piece of kit, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and you can use it to start building your own ranges and studying... Um, what you want to be doing and where on all parts of the game tree, which is really, really, really good. So um, let's get started then. And so we, we're focusing on sea bedding, aren't we? So what you can do if you were to purchase GTO Wizard, this is the uh, well, you don't even need to purchase it. This is the free part. Okay. So what you can do in terms of the f like, you, you're just like, oh, what's well, GTO Wizard? Let me have a look. You don't have to pay for anything to begin with. You can just literally look at all the preflop scenarios. You can see what types of uh, you can change the rake environments and a few things here. I've got it on 100 big blind Stack, general strategy, NL50 rake. Uh, I've gone for a two and a half X open size, GTO three bet size. This is, what's that going to mean? Don't worry about it too much. These are just the general sizes and bits and bobs there that you can set up. You can put that on your own screen. And then you can choose um, action pre flop. So, for example, let's say un under the gun open and what type of hands might a big blind defend with in various ways. Pre flop, you can see it all for free. So, you can download GTO Wizard and look at this right now for free. So, um, you won't be able to start doing post flop stuff. Um, but what you can do is you can at least look at what type of hands you can start using. Okay. I'm just saying, like, what you might want to consider. And I know you can do. Um, for the free version, you can do um, a couple of practice mode. Um, I think you get like a couple of hands a day, like 10 hands or 10 scenarios a day that you can practice on. So I will show you that in a second. But what I would highly recommend is like even trialing this for a month. Um, I've got a discount link in the uh, description below. Everything's in the description. But if you're thinking about about using it, this is a fantastic piece of kit. This is what I use. So for example, C betting, getting back to the uh, main part of this video. So. I need to get the post flop, don't I? So if I was to purchase GTO Wizard, I would get to the post flop. If I don't have GTO Wizard purchased, I can still practice a couple of hands a day. What I might do is, um, let's think about the, um, just give me a second for practice mode drills. What I would do here is I would go over to, um, I can go over to practice. Uh, give me one second. I can go over to trainer. I can go over to drill. I can do lots of different things. I'm just going to go over to trainer. And you can choose a scenario. So uh, I think I already had one set up, but I'm just going to redo it just for the sake of argument. Um, let's go to um, starting point. No, actually, we'll do it custom. Let's just say we raise under the gun. Big blind calls. We'll do any flop. Big blind checks to us. And then here we are in UTG. What you can do is you can start. And as you can see, we'll come up. So what you, you can also change the settings where you can um, change your displays. So as you can see here, I'm changing it where you can have it simplistic, where you can just see the bet sizes. You can change it to percentages, or you can have both together, which is which is quite nice. I'm just going to mess around here, but what you can do while I'm talking is you can literally um, go step by step here, where you can literally make an action and you can literally play your play. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just drilling this exact scenario: UTG versus big blind single raise. Um, I'll make my action um, and then. In the, in the options tab, you can have it set up where you can literally um, have it tell you whether, you know, at the end of the hand or during the hand stage by stage, if you're making the right decisions. Uh, I think I've got this on to full hand, so I think it might just keep going. Okay, there we go. But what you can do is you can also set this up where you just do a single street, where it would just have action on the flop, it make your action, and then you'd move on to the next scenario and keep drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling, lots of different types of board textures or a specific one if you want to have a custom one and you can go from there. I think if I'm right, I think you get about 10 of these for free. Um, if you just if you haven't purchased the uh, the main content of Wizard, but this is really 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 nice. Um, so this is something you can use as a study tool because I know it's like uh, like what I'm trying to say to you is like the the general fundamental strategy of sea betting I put in or a lot of it I put in in this presentation. But I know and I appreciate that a lot of you are going to go right over your head and you're going to go well what do I do now right this is a solution this is something that you can use this is a piece of equipment that you can do your own training on and you can do your own self improvement on you don't need to just like get coaching and stuff like whatever this is something you can use for your own learning and it's extremely good it's absolutely fantastic so this is what i use for the um the practice mode what you can also do 
which is um, absolutely amazing. And again, to get to the flop, um, you kind of really need to do the, you need to purchase it, unfortunately. This isn't a sales pitch, but I'm just saying, this is what I use, um, and I know a lot of users who watch um, not only my content, but all content, um, they either do solver work or they do coaching or they do um, or they use pieces of equipment like GTO Wizard, uh, GTO Plus, Trojan. There's, there's other pieces of kit, isn't there? But it's all the same sort of thing. Um, but what you can do is, if I go back to study, um, what I can do is I can start looking at um, aggregated reports and I can start looking at range versus range reports. So you're just going to go, what? What's going on? This is seabedding. Where, where's the seabedding? We're going to get to it right now. Um, so what you would do here, so let's bring up a scenario, shall we? Let's do um, a UTG open, add a big blind call. It's just a nice simple one, isn't it? What you can do is click the call. Um, we have to put a board in here. Let's just pick a random board. It doesn't really matter for now for our purpose. We'll put a random board in here. Um, so you'll find that some ranges, the big blinds will do some donking. Don't worry about that for now. We're just focusing on the um, initial aggressor C betting. Um, so what you would do is get to this position where I would be c-betting and overall from a strategy point of view, you can start looking at um, types of hands that you would get here with. So all of these hands here that are in red at the moment, this is our GTO range that we would get here with, opening under the gun, um, facing a, a big blind flat and here we are. Um, you can actually see um, like if you're new to this kind of thing, you're not really gonna kind of know what's going on or why and these percentages are like, Okay, they're just going to be like, oh, what's going on? Don't worry for now. Okay, let's just keep it really, really, really simple. All you would do is you just look over here and you can start looking at what types of sizes you might be betting um, and what types of your hands. If you hover over here in the bottom right corner, you can see what sizes it might choose. To begin with, as a new user, you are just going to go, okay, I can do that. But you're not going to know any of the whys. You're not going to understand. So, for example, here, it's betting its entire range. You're not going to know why it's betting its entire range. You're going to you're going to click on a node here, ace-queen, that locks that in. I can look over here, and you can see if, you know, and then you can start seeing, for example, that you're doing a lot of overbetting and large betting. You're going to go, okay, I know I can bet large on ace-king-8 with ace-queen. But you're not going to go, why? And it's the wrong way to sort of go around learning. So this is why this presentation, hopefully, is going to be helpful. Remember, it's about that we've got the reasons for bet C betting, haven't we? This piece of software just gives you a lot of overall information. This is like the brain. This is showing you all the different types of hands that you might use. Um, that, well, it shows you your entire range and how you would want to construct your range, right? So it's just basically an overall strategy. You know, when you have random questions and you go, oh, I'm in this spot, what do I do? You can actually, now you can off the tables, you can start researching your hands. Lock, put them in your tracker and review them and then bring them on wizard and then put them in and, and see how the solver wants to play them, okay? I appreciate that there's, the ranges might be different and they probably will be, so you'll have to consider that, but just generally you can start seeing how your sort of overall range wants to play in a lot of spots. So this is quite cool. But what I want to do to actually show you C betting is I want to actually get to the spot where I C bet. So what I can do to make this a little bit more complicated is I can go to ranges bonk and then you're just gonna go whoa what's all this well this is a little bit more advanced and i appreciate that but you know i just want to show you it but um what you can do here is you can actually say right well if i go back to strategy this is my range as under the gun okay this is what my whole range wants to do yeah i can see that on this ace king eight if we go back to our presentation slides you know that under the gun we have more of a nut edge and our range under the gun is quite condensed. The big blind range is a lot wider. It's gonna have a lot less really, really nutted hands. They're not gonna have aces or kings. They're only very, very small amount of time supposed to have ace king. Um, the best hands are like pocket eights, uh, ace eight, king eight, um, and very, very low frequency ace king. And they can also have ace queen, I suppose, and hands like that. Whereas we're gonna have all of that and better, and our overall range is slightly more condensed than the big blinds um, to say. We're not going to have hands like, you know, we're going to have less King X suit, like the weak King X suited. We're going to have less like connectors and so on, um, things like that. OK, but um, so we just know that from the presentation, we know that our range and our nut advantage is so strong that we just get to bet a lot. And the sizes we generally want to choose are, um, well, to be fair, it's mixed on something like this because we have such an edge. You can just basically do whatever you want. But if you was were to change the board slightly like ace queen eight or like ace ace eight, for example, these would start changing changing slightly based on how the big blinds range would react to the board but all the jargon aside you can see um you can actually um start looking at what parts of your range want to do what 
for our purposes for C betting, all I really want to do is I just want to show you this as an overall. Um, you've got the strategy tab here, but then you've also got the ranges tab, which gives you a bit more of a why would I be betting my entire range here, for example. So if I click on range, um, let's start having a look here. So on the left here, this is the big blinds range that gets here right now. These are all the GTO combinations technically that the um, uh, big blind gets here with. I'm trying to think what's an easier spot. We'll just keep it on hands, I suppose. But you can have a look at all the different hands. So you see how many hands the big blind should be defending with. It's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of hands, isn't it? Loads and loads of combos. So in terms of who's got the most combos right now, okay, the big blind's range is far wider, isn't it? Loads and loads of hands. Whereas under the gun is a lot more condensed overall. We've just got a lot of really, really good hands most of the time that absolutely smash this board. The big blind will have some hands that smack them, hit this board relatively well, but they just don't have the nut end. That's why we get to do things like overbetting, for example, if you see here. Because remember from the presentation, we've got all the best hands that Villain doesn't have that allows us to be able to overbet if we wish. We can also bet small, often, a lot of the time. We can also bet mixed frequency, um, mixed frequency sizes as well if you want to. I would probably suggest that you just pick a cup like one or two sizes. So for example, you could have um, a smaller size and an overbet if you wanted to. Or you could just say I might bet 50% and overbet if I wanted to simplify it because there's lots of sizes here, isn't there? You don't always have to do three, four, five sizes on everything because it starts going all over the place. If you're a new user, this is already going to go over your head, isn't it? You know, you're just looking for some advice on what type of board textures that you might see bet on and why, you know? And then you might get some users who look at this and go, I know exactly what I'm looking at. I want to look at what types of range villain has. It's going to be like, this is why this is a pinch of salt, I suppose. Some users who watch this will be like, yep, yeah, I get that. That's really helpful. And other users are just going to go, ah, don't. No more, I can't look at it, it's terrifying. I appreciate that. Um, it's taken me a long time to even remotely look at this and go, I kind of get it, so I kind of know where you're at, okay? I would just say, if you do have questions on this, throw them in the comments and I can try and help you or join the Discord and ask on there as well. Both are really, really good. But anyway, I'm going to um, continue so we can actually see what the hell's going on. So if you turn in terms of equity here, we can see that in the blue, which is the big blind, the big blind's just really not winning this race very well, are they? That's why we're allowed to do lots of um, lots of betting and lots of large betting if we want to as well. And, and as UTG, we're just doing extremely well. We're just doing really, really well in this race. This is this is like our race, if you were. Um, on our range, we're way more condensed. We've We've got all the really good hands. We've got um, less combos overall. We've got more combos of really strong hands. Our EV, our range EV is just super good, which means our whole rate, we're just making so much money in this position against this against the big blind. Loads of our hands and range have really good equity. Uh, we're going to realize a lot of this equity. Down here is what's also interesting. I'll keep this on the simple tab so you can see it. Look at the percentages, like best hands in terms of range. Okay, that's why some of these hands are the same, but they won't show up for both um, both tabs. If we look at the best hands in our range, so we've got, for example, aces. We've got ace king. We've got kings. Um, we've like villain don't doesn't have those. So we've already got like a nice nut edge there. Also, in terms of range, we've also got more good hands, which is also really really good in range. Okay, and in terms of weak hands, yeah, we will have some here, but like in terms of our overall percentage of hands, we've got such, I mean, we've effectively got half the amount of hand combos that Villain has in their range. So we're more condensed, aren't we? Which is really, really nice. So our range is doing quite well. We've got all the best hands that Villain doesn't have. We're doing very well there. So we're allowed to overbet. We're allowed to bet big. We can bet small if we want to, but we should be betting very, 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 very often as in close to pure effectively. Because we've got all of these massive sort of boxes ticked, we just get to do what the hell we want. If we get here with four or five of diamonds, bet it. If we get here with a set of kings, let's go ahead and bet it. Like different parts of your range will prefer to do different sizes. Like if we had a set of aces, we might prefer to maybe go smaller here, I suppose, because we're kind of blocking a lot of villains calling range. If we start overbetting a set of aces, I'm not saying we can't, but it makes it very difficult for villain to kind of continue without anything other than, you know, top of range, which is going to be a very, very small amount of the time, considering how many hands they have. Um, anyway, you can just see, look, just this is the main one to take. Look at the percentage of trash hands in range. So if we hover over trash hands here, just look on the left here. Look at all these trash. Look at all the trash on that big that the big blind has that doesn't really interact with this board that well at all. Like, you know, you've just got like sort of weak one pairs, queen high, seven highs, and all the jargon. And then when it comes to like the weak the absolute weakest parts of the UTG range, um, we just we just have so much so 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 much few uh, I can't even speak English, so fewer combos of all this rubbish. That we just we just absolutely. If there was a time to windmill in, 
right, and start a dick swinging, it's now. Because we just absolutely have the option and ability to. The big blind just cannot, they, they, they just absolutely, like, we're basically um, a rocket launcher versus like, I don't know, a pen knife in, in, in terms of like comparison of, uh, of nutted uh, of power, I suppose, is, is a way to say it. But this is the range breakdown. So the, 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 this is the range versus range tab. This is really good if when you're doing your own studying, if you're using GTA Wizard, I'm, I'm assuming there's something similar in other uh, pieces of software. I don't know, I don't use them. But this is really important to start learning the whys. Like the strategy tells you what to do and how often to do it. But if you don't know why, then there's no point. You, you don't want to just, this is the wrong way to study. You don't want to just go, aha, I'm going to click on Kings. Okay, I know I can overbet kings if I want to half the time. Okay, I must remember I can, I can overbet kings if I want to. If I click on aces, I can overbet, but I don't overbet very often. Uh, okay, okay, I'll remember that. No, what you want to say is, right, aces. I'm bl what's villain's top end hand that can continue? That's not obviously just a set of eights. It's a lot of ace x, for example, um, like things like that. So if we're blocking all of it, we generally want to bet smaller most of the time, right? Makes more sense. Whereas if you've got a set of kings, you unblock the ace x. So now we get loads of value from the ace x that calls by overbetting. Do you see? So like we want to know some of the whys rather than just, I, I guess I'll do that. I need to remember this. You need to kind of train your your thought process to be starting to consider. You need to be able to ask yourself questions. You need to almost second guess yourself and ask yourself reasons for every single piece of um, strategy you apply in every scenario. Sea betting is just one part of the game tree. It can apply to anything, right? It can absolutely anything at all. But you need to start in poker learning why you're doing things rather than just doing something because you've seen someone else do something. You must start learning things because otherwise you will never improve. You will, you know, if you're doing something and you don't know why you're doing something, you're going to make mistakes and those mistakes are then going to compound on the turn and river. You might bet range here and you don't know why you're betting range, get raised and you don't know how to do it. You don't know what size to choose or why, you don't know how to play turn. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, don't apply things because they, you've seen people do them. Say to yourself, I think this makes logical sense. Uh, tell yourself what the logical sense you think it is. Play the hand how you think you should play the hand. Record the hand and, or review, and, and for review after session. And then have a look at the hand on the wizard or on, um, on a solver or anything at all like that. And then see how the GTO would play that hand. And you can start seeing how close your actual thought processes are to actual theoretically correct um, process, thought processes and strategy. And you can see how close you are or far away you are. And then you can start plugging leaks. That's how it works. Okay. It's, it's, it's just a game of um, a tag in a way. Right? You need to find what your leaks are and, and adjust them. And then every time you're in positions to do something, you need to know why you're doing it. Okay, That's really, really important. So the last part of this GTA Wizard breakdown is, uh, this is going to go so much longer than half an hour. This is really annoying. <laughs> um, is, um, right, where, what do I want to go? I want to go to aggregated reports. You will need, um, I think, the, if I believe, the starter version of GTA Wizard gives you the flop. And I think when you go to start like turns and rivers, you need the uh, premium version, I think. But for today, we're just using um, C betting flops, aren't we? So we go to reports. This is even going to be more scary. Boom. So what we can do here is we can um, appreciate some of you are just going to go, oh, what is this? This is really good for C betting because you can start looking at your entire range. So now you can absolutely start scrolling through. So I can look at, for example, I'm on flops here. Um, I'm on the UTG because I'm up here. Um, click on like A side board textures, king high board textures, queen high board textures, scroll through them. Um, if you want, you can also look at um, actual specific sizes and it will limit you to what types of board textures do those sizes as well. Um, so for example, ace, king, eight, um, I mean, let's pick some different textures. So maybe let's go to um, some low boards, for example. See if we can find a low paired board. We've got um, a tri board here, three deuces. Again, like looking at something like this from a UTG point of view, because we've got so many of these over pairs um, that are just absolutely killing it, we just get to bet our range again, right? Villain's going to have um, a decent amount of hands, but they're not going to have the nut end of hands. And we're more, way more condensed, so we just get to bet more often, right? Whereas if we have a spot like, I don't know, I'm clicking on buttons here, like a low paired board, yeah, we still have all of those bigger hands, but because villain, like the big blind, is going to have fours at full frequency, they might have four three suited, they're going to have more like suited three X than us some of the time. Um, they're going to like, they're going to have some three X's or they're, they're going to interact with this board sometimes a bit more often than us. And they're going to have more of these like pocket fours and things. They've got more hands here. So it just makes more sense to bet relatively often, but small, for example. Uh, I'm just trying to click on other options. Whereas when it's a tri board again, um, 
the reason why deuces and fours are different is because on fours, again, villain has a lot of 4x that we don't. So he can have quads, right? He can have, like, like I know you're saying, oh, it's just quads, Pat. Well, yeah, that's true. But, like, it is a thing. I'm not being funny. If you just start overbetting 444, like, you're kind of allowing him to play relatively well. Whereas you could just like bet small or bet half more often, I suppose. Um, whereas when it comes to like pocket deuces, you still do that kind of strategy. But now, uh, okay, you don't over bet, but now you can bet larger because your villain doesn't hit the deuce that often either, right? It's only like ace deuce suited, I suppose. Um, whereas like pocket four, uh, sorry, a four X, your villain will actually interact slightly more, but that's getting a bit nitpicky. But our overall like big advantage comes with these like ace X boards and king X boards, doesn't it? This is, this is just us. Like we've got more of these like... Um, pocket kings like ace king the thing that i would say though is as you can see as these board textures change i'm looking here for example on the textures um when the when the when the um texture of the board change where the big blind where we're still using g versus big blind by the way uh for anyone who's not sure the big blind will interact with a lot of board textures as well. So, for example, ace king eight is an extreme end. But as you can see here, like king ten five, um, we don't start overbetting king ten five. Ask yourself a question: Why don't we overbet king ten five, but we overbet ace king eight? Ask yourself that question now. Have a look. What do you what do you think? Basically, um, in terms of ace king eight, we've got that real nut edge. So we've got aces, ace king, kings more often than villain. It's really hard to interact with that board. It's hard to, to, to sort of have a lot of hands that have a lot of equity or can continue. Whereas a board like king ten five, like, yeah, we still have more aces, a, uh, kings and ace king. But villain's going to have a set of tens now. They're going to have a set of fives. They've got two ha combinations of, or two sets of hands that can make sets. They're going to have king ten suited, right? Whereas on the ace king, they don't have much of that. They're going to have hands like queen jack. Um, you know, they're going to have open ended. They're going to have hands with a lot more equity. And they're also going to have, like, very strong hands here as well, right? Because, like, we have more aces ace king and kings but now they have other hands to fight back like more combos of sets more combos of like higher equity hands like open enders and things like that so we don't really get to over bet but we can absolutely bet bigger you know if all we can bet small like do you see like it's different like the board texture is slightly different so that changes our thought process on and our strategy on how to to counter it with c betting um so this we're going to look at some examples in a moment but i just wanted to go through this like this is aggregated reports here you can mix this up and choose different types of boards you can you can sort of um, specify what what you want to look at and sizes um you can look at what different types of board textures you might bet a third on for example um compared to like over betting um but yeah like that's aggregated reports. Okay, so that's that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skim through some of these examples um, and then we're gonna finish. I'm, I was debating whether to do this as a 30 minute segment and then maybe do a part four. Um, no, I'm gonna do this as one video, okay, if, um, to plug through. I'm gonna try and get this done in the next 15, 20 minutes. We're gonna go through some examples. So let's go back to the presentation. Um, doo -doo -doo. Give me a second. There we are. Right. What I think I'm going to do, because I know I know that this is going to take longer than I wanted it to take, which is actually really annoying. Um, let me just make this a bit bigger. Um, there we go. So what we're going to do, I was planning on maybe bringing up Wizard after the fact and like showing you ranges and stuff, but um, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. You could tell I'm not editing this and I'm doing this live and trying to absolutely wing this. Um, no, let's just go with the some of these scenarios and see how we go for time. So what I want you guys to do at home is to stay with me and I want you to focus on each of these spots single handed and then we'll look at um, what the like then we'll talk about what the answers are. So single race spots first. So we've gone over a few of these already. So you should have a bit of an idea um, as to um, some of the, the ideas of what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ask you at home some scenarios. And this is just going to be flop single race scenarios to begin with. And I want you to pause the video or, you know, if you want to, and then think about what ranges, you, what, what types of sizes you might choose and why um, in these specific positions. And then we'll um, talk about them and why. Okay. So the first spot we're going to choose is the UTG open versus a big blind defend in a single race pot. Okay. So we've already done that um, with um, what we talked about or so far in the video, haven't we? So it's going to be, a bit, this one should be the easy one, okay? So if you want to, pause the video now, have a think about it, and then we'll look at the answers, okay? So answers for Ace-King-5 then. So what are we thinking? So we've got all the, um, as we spoke about, we've got all the sort of nut-end hands, haven't we? We've got Aces, we've got Kings, we've got Ace-King, um, 
we've got like more hands like ace queen suited and so on but basically we're doing very well on this board aren't we so if you said to yourself we get to bet very very often you are correct chances um, the, the only thing is what type of size do we want to choose well we can basically choose everything can't we we should be betting often i don't think you have to bet pure but we should be betting very very often because for mostly um a small size however you absolutely can basically choose whatever size you wish because we've got a very very decent nut edge and a good range advantage here we can overbet if we'd like to um with some of our range like a set of kings is a good option to overbet i suppose uh, i'm trying to think of other combos i suppose some of the other value hands that unblock a sex is really important like king five suited pocket five something like that we can bet little as well i mean we can have hands like at low frequency six seven of diamonds you could bet small with that you could bet over bet with that you can kind of do whatever you want i suppose basically anything you know mostly betting and then betting absolutely any size you wish okay what i'm going to do let's look at the second one is we're going to focus on button versus big blind so we open up the button big blind defends here we are with ace king five rainbow what do you want to do here? And I'll I'll give you a clue, okay? It's not the same, all right? It, it's not the same as uh, the UTG. So have a think and let's move on. Right then, so button versus big blind. So what do we want to do here? So technically we still have this nut edge. We still have more aces, more kings. We absolutely, we, we have more of a overemphasized nut edge now because the big blind should really be three betting ace queen a lot of the time. They should absolutely be three betting ace king all the time. Same with kings and aces. So their best hands are only like ace queen at a low frequency, king five, ace five, fives. Whereas against the UTG, they would defend a few more like ace kings and ace queens as flats. Anyway, so because we've got a nut edge, we're allowed to bet really, really big if we want to, like overbetting. However, we don't get to bet our range here, and we don't really get to bet small here because we've got more hands to look after. Our range, if you remember the range versus range that we looked at on Wizard, our range on the button that we open is going to be very wide um, compared to the UTG range that we open, which is going to be more condensed, isn't it? So the two ranges, like you've got a condensed range under the gun and you've got a larger, raise, uh, larger range on the button, sorry, not raise. So... Even though you have all these best hands, it, it, it's, it comes down to like how many hands you need to like look after in your range and protect. So when you've got lots and lots of hands to look after and think about that like you don't just want to bet your range, otherwise you've got too many hands that bet range. For example, you open yourself up to being attacked. You want to just like start considering larger sizes um, more often or checking. So actually what we really want to do almost always is either check or overbet. And not really do anything in between because basically if we had a value hand we want to get the absolute maximum for it on here if we've got like a set of kings we've got a set of fives we've got ace king ace queen ace jack etc that's the extreme end but other hands as well we, we don't want to bet a third here and just say oh we bet little and often because technically that's not what you want to do you won't get the maximum value and you won't get the maximum fold equity really really big or check that's what we want to be doing okay none of this like small betting i suppose if you argued there might be like four or five percent of the time maybe i don't know something like that that you would bet small but you basically want to just huge nuke or check that's what we basically want to be doing so final um version of this um scenario is we're going to change it over to the small blind so the small blind opens the big blind flats and here we are so have a think about how our range might interact with this one um i'll give you a clue um it's very similar to um the second hand we did the, the one we just done but just a little bit of a tweak okay so have a think about it um and let's move on so small blind open big blind defend here we are so really again it's the same principle button versus big blind as uh, you know with small blind versus big blind both ranges are very very wide however the only thing that's different is the fact that the big blind should be a bit more aggressive against the small blind because the small blind is really wide right so the, because the big blind's flatted you, you you would kind of suggest that it, it hasn't got all of the absolute hands right like like it would be again the big blind would really be three betting quite a lot it would be three betting some of its weakest ace x it'd be three betting some more of these like weak and marginal hands and then it'd also be three betting more like value hands as well so most of the time we're still over betting with or checking but we can if we want to we can just add in a smidge more um we can add in a smidge of small as well, like a kind of block size. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, personally, I would still kind of just simplify it to, like, kind of overbet and check because it just makes life easy. But um, I would just suggest, like, mostly overbetting or checking. But you can do a tiny bit of, you can do a tiny bit of block, I suppose. Um, 
if you wanted to. I, I'm just trying to think in reality, depending on the stakes you play, if that's even that good. I suppose an exploit adjustment out of position, it might be better just to bet small, just because it makes life easier, I suppose, rather than just going massive. Um, but generally, we're still over betting or checking, but we might just add a little bit of block in there as well. Okay. Um, Right, so we're going to move on to under the gun versus uh, button flat. So we're going to be out of position this time. So versus, remember what we um, talked about with the um, in position. So position uh, in position is going to have, um, they're going to be a little bit more capped to the nutted end of, ha end of hands, obviously, compared to how they three bet you. But overall, um, we're going to have to be quite respectful, depending on a lot of board textures that we may not hit. Okay, so um, under the gun versus button flat, here we are. So have a think about it for a second and then we'll have a look at it. So in terms of the um, board texture here, well, it's interesting because we, you, you might say to yourself, okay, well, we've got all the best hands here. We've got kings, they don't. We've got queens, they probably don't. We've got like um, ace king. You know, we get to like just bet our entire range here. We get to over bet as well. Be careful here, okay? Be careful is why I would suggest this. When you're out of position, you I mean, overbedding can be a thing, but it, it's mostly a case of like, you, you generally do a lot of checking and you do a lot of small sizes because you have, depending on the board textures, because you have to respect in position purely because in position is so condensed. They're very condensed. They're not gonna be flatting you with king five suit, king six suited. They're not, they're gonna be calling you with really strong like broadways. They're gonna be calling you strong pairs. They're gonna have some some of these sort of medium to high end, more, more so the high end connectors like jack 10 suited and so on. They're more condensed. They don't have any offsuit com like many offsuit combos either, like ace ten off and stuff like that. They're very strong, very condensed. They can even technically flat queens here, so they can have sevens, they can have queens, they can have king queen. Um, I think we're almost always three betting ace king. I think there might be the tiniest smidge, but they're mostly three betting ace king. Um, they're also because it's a flush draw board. This is what's interesting. Remember, in position is going to have hands like ace ten of spades. Like ace jack of diamonds, they're gonna have gut shots, they're gonna have gut shot flush draws, they're gonna have two pairs, they've got two combos of sets, they've got all the combos. Like you don't just get to say, because I've got aces, ace king, and kings more, that I get to like over bet. This is a spot where you have to respect a very, very strong condensed range that's got a lot of hands that can play well. Even if you over bet this, villain's got a lot of hands that can play well against over bet. So you don't wanna bet, like, you don't wanna start smashing like over bets with like king 10 and then start getting binned by like ace jack of diamonds. Do you see? Or like, you know, jack 10 of spades or something like jack nine of spades, whatnot. So you want to be careful with that. At the same time, like what, like, would I bet this with my entire range? No, I would honestly actually be still checking. Like I would think it's something like half the time, 40% of the time, something like that. If I was going to bet, it would actually be small and it wouldn't be with your range. It would be a small size or a check. That's basically what your, um, what your overall strategy should be in terms of like C betting. Again, if you were to change the board dynamic, so for example, if it was like ace king seven with two spades, yes, villain can still have a lot of decent hands, but they can't have a set of kings. They can't really have a set of aces. Um, it also blocks some of these like nut flush um, combo draws and so on. So it limits them a bit more. You get to do a bit more C betting and so on. It's different, right? But again, that's something you can play around with if you uh, have GTA Wizard. So our final version of the single raise is we're going to go on to a paired board um, and we are going to open from the cutoff. So we're going to be in that kind of mixed position. We've, we're kind of wide, but not super wide. Um, the big blind is going to be quite strong, but you know, again, the big blind is going to be relatively wide in their flat. Um, so paired board then. So what I'm going to do again, there's no, I mean, there's no donking here anyway, but there are no donks. We're always going to start with the aggressor and we're just going to focus on what the aggressor does. Okay. So take a second on queen, queen five, cutoff versus big blind defend. What would you do here in the cutter? What do you think your range wants to do? Take a second and then come back. Okay. So here we are. Now, first off the bat, with the Queen X boards, we generally um, do a lot of large sizes. However, we are paired. So because we're paired, like you basically want, you, you're kind of in a position, and this does change based on the positions on the table to make it more complicated, but here we are. In the cutoff, you kind of don't really need to sell this. You've still got all the best hands. Like the big blind should be three betting a decent amount with like ace queen with pocket. Oh, they should always be three betting with a lot of hands like pocket queens that you've still got aces, you've got kings, you've got more jacks, you've got more tens, etc. Like you've still got the best pairs and you've got the best queen x and you've got pocket fives and you've also got queen five suited which the big blind has as well so you've got all the best hands and more whereas the big blind doesn't also the big blind's got loads of hands that have missed this board more than you because you're more condensed in an opening range than they are in a defense so you're king 
So again, you should effectively be betting. I'm trying to think if I'd pure bet this. I kind of think I would. Um, I suppose you could, there's an argue for a small amount of check, but I think it would almost be like a tiny percentage. I, I don't know. I, I think I'd basically bet pure on this board. I know you're the king, but again, because villain still has pocket fives, queen five, and at some frequency ace queen, etc. I, I don't think we would overbet this or bet large. I think it just can, comes down to a case of very, very, very small size very, very often. Because again, it's like if you are overbetting this with aces or even, you know, just nut end like ace, queen, pocket fives. If, even if you have pocket fives, you block everything. It's really hard. If you've got ace, queen, it's really hard for villain to continue. You know, if they've got king, queen, queen, jack, queen, ten or whatever, they've got a queen x, you're pocket, you know, you're going to get a lot of money anyway. You're going to get loads and loads of money. So... If I was to overbet aces here, you bin yourself versus like queen five fives and queen x, um, and sometimes a bluff, but it's just not really correct, is it? So you'd basically bet very, very often for a very small size. That's basically what you want to do um, in this type of scenario with a paired board on the queen's cutoff versus big blind. So last three scenarios, and then we'll finish. I'm looking at the time, 40 minutes. We'll probably be done in about 10, 15 minutes tops, guys. I apologize. I wanted this to be a bit shorter video to finish, but it never is because I love to talk, unfortunately. Um, I was mainly focused on single raise, but we will do a couple of very quick three bet spots as well because I know a few people did ask. So three bet scenarios. So to make sure that you guys, yep, you can you can at home see what I'm looking at. Um, we're going to focus on UTG open versus a hijack three bet. Now, just one um, thing to say with this. In a GTO scenario, um, a lot of strategy would be to fold and to four bet as the aggressor, uh, as the uh, UTG here. I am just going to give you a scenario where we flat out position because I'm just going to try and keep the positions, uh, the spots relatively simple and straightforward and not do too many like four betting spots um, or complex spots. I just want to keep it relatively simple. Okay. So we'll say for the sake of argument, we've opened under the gun. The hijack is three bet us. Um, um, no, sorry, I'm lying. Sorry, the under the gun's opened. We've three bet, sorry, in the hijack. And the under the gun has called us. Because we want to be the aggressor, don't we? I'm sorry, I'm talking out my ass. So, ace-king-5 again. The reason I've chosen these ace-king-5 boards is because they are like the extreme end. Uh, I think these textures people get wrong um, a lot of the time. So, three-bet pots. So, again, something to think about with three-bet pots is there's more money in the middle. Ranges are more condensed. And ranges are, str like, they're stronger. They're more condensed. Blocker value comes into play. And also just the value of the pots, like winning the pots. Um, equity denial is more important like it's just there's a lot more money in there to win we've we've put more in, we've invested a lot of money already ranges are strong we have to we have we want to be aggressive but we want to be more careful and considerate about ranges the thing to say and the reason why this is such an easy example is because you've got all the bet like because you've three bet under the gun if they had aces kings or ace king they should technically be four betting you like basically always one way or another like most of the time so really we just have the absolute nut end because you're in a three bet pot the option of like over betting is a little bit less attractive you you can still do it in some other positions but here you basically again just want to bet small and often i uh, sorry i should have given you a chance to uh, pause the video for a second but this is an easy one this is a really really easy one because you just have all the absolute hands here just say for example you got here with i don't know i'm trying to think of a hand if you, if you got here at low frequency with let's say like six seven of hearts for example like you there's no need to overbet because you could just bet small and fold out like nines or eights or like it depends on villain's calling range i suppose but like you don't have to like overbet to put massive pressure on. You can just bet small and often. But whereas when you were uh, in other positions, like you're like, oh, but like Ace King Five, we were like overbetting and checking. That was a single race pot. That was in late position versus big blind. This is a UTG versus hijack three bet spot. The hijack to call you is very strong. He's got like Ace Jack suited, Ace Queen suited. He can have pocket fives if he opened it. He can have Ace Five suited, but he doesn't really have the absolute hands. So you don't need to pressure him by overbetting. You just do loads of betting for small sizes. I suppose you could argue for having some mixed size, like you could go like maybe like 40 or 50% as well if you wanted to slightly size up some of your hands to build the pot. But most of the time, I think just betting small is just absolute, with your entire range effectively is the best way to go. Nice and nice and simple, really. Let's mix it up. Okay, so let's say we open, uh, sorry, let's say you, this is, this is going to be an interesting one. Let's say under the gun opens. Okay, and we three bet in the big blind. 
and under the gun calls okay so we get to a board texture of the queen of diamonds the jack of diamonds and the five of spades so this is what's interesting because we've three bet in the um so utg's opened we've three bet in the big blind utg's called technically in the big blind um we should be very polarized with the hands we're raising with three betting with like we're basically saying look we've got really really absolutely amazing hands to three bet you in this position because we're kind of incentivized to do a lot of calling like we don't need to three bet you with a lot a lot of hands so we're basically saying we've got massive hands or we've got hands like queen five suited we've got like king three suited we've got hands like um some offsuit broad like very very low frequency you've got some offsuit broad low offsuit broadways um or we've got really good hands like really really good hands to put it into context in the big blind we're flatting basically pure here with jacks even queens we do a lot of flatting pre technically so do you see like how polarized we actually are in this situation so we have to respect that UTG can have pocket jacks, UTG can have pocket queens, UTG can have queen jack suited, UTG can have pocket fives. They can also have like, you know, all the nut end like flush draws and back doors and combo draws. Like we have to respect under the gun here because they have all the best hands as well as us. The only hands they don't have is kings and aces, I suppose, and um, some of the time ace king. But like apart from that in terms of like the nut end hands or like equity hands like they're doing pretty well so again we like in terms of sizing we shouldn't really be doing a lot of overbetting i think we can do some large sizes but again we generally want to be doing like a small to small to medium size again right because the utg interacts with the board we're very polarized but that doesn't mean we just want to start like nuking and windmill in this because it's you know if villains got all the best hands in equity we don't really want to just start overbetting again just generally a mixed size is nice we, we can check some of the time if we want to deceptively as a trap and also just to protect hands like yeah i don't, I don't know like pocket tens like we can sometimes check sets we can check two pairs we can check some over pairs if we want to we can check some hands that have just completely whiffed um so we're not over c betting the flop like i don't know like i'm trying to think of combos like, I, I don't know if we were aggressive enough we could just have a hand like i don't know like a three of clubs i suppose that probably wouldn't be an amazing hand to bet we could check fold that but then if we had a hand like a three of spades i suppose we could go ahead and bet that some of the time we could check it some of the time we could check raise it you see like we can do multiple things if you were to look at gta wizard as well for example you could start looking at how the whole range interacts but anyway back to c betting um generally because the the utg does interact with this board quite well actually um i'm just thinking of ranges like we're both quite condensed because we've we've got more weaker hands um like than villain if we're saying that we're three betting properly we're three betting with like ace three suited whereas utg isn't going to raise and call a three bet with ace three suited a whole bunch we're if we're three betting like 10 7 suited 9 7 suited like or whatever like very very rare amount of the time if we're three betting some suit connectors if we're, if we're three betting like king four suited as a bluff do you see like we've got like our range is actually a little bit wider than they are so we have to be quite careful with what we choose and how we do it I would generally suggest a small to medium size here. I actually think both sizes are quite nice. I'm trying to think if I'd ever bet large. I suppose there's some argument for it, but I'd primarily be focusing on like a third to 50% kind of size, I suppose. And I'd probably be checking a decent amount at the time as well, both deceptively and um, with some give ups and also some hands that just kind of want to check call and move, move forward from there. So you can do a lot, but the idea is, to, and the gist of it is to respect villains so you know like ace king five for example we can do a lot of small sizes because we have the nut end whereas here we're doing a lot of small sizes because we're, we're actually respecting villains um, range and we can do some half pot here as well if we want to okay so we can kind of do a lot of things but we're mainly still being relatively cautious but um without being too scared okay and then the last spot is um what did i have here i had a small blind versus a big blind um in a three bet part so let's say the um small blind opens we three bet in the big blind and then they call in the small blind and then the board's going to be very very dynamic nine eight seven all suited and the um small blind checks to us now i just want to have a disclaimer here our big blind three bet range is very wide so for example in terms of like i've actually written some of them down for reference some of the widest hands we would three bet here i would be three betting hands like 10 five suited 
uh, maybe jack three suited. Um, I'd be three betting at some frequency hands like king seven off suit, hands like jack line off. I've uh, very, very often ace deuce off, face three off, king five off. So you can appreciate how wide I'm three betting here in this position. Okay, so before we start thinking about ranges, think about that. The small blinds range that opens is also going to be very wide, but then to continue against a three bet, they're going to be a little bit more condensed, aren't they? And again, to make it more complicated, technically the small blind should be four bedding loads, but that's something for another day, okay? We're just gonna just keep it very, very simple as much as possible. So we three bed the big blind, the small blind has defended, and here we are. Now, this is a really interesting one because, because we're three bedding so wide, we're, our range is massive here, okay? The small blind's relatively big, but also, but just way more, the small blind's way more condensed than us, okay? But they can have hands like king eight suited, like king nine suited. They, they can have hands that interact with this board as much as us. Um, it kind of comes down to like, who's got loads of, who's got more flushes? Because you're blind on blind, this is why I've chosen this spot. This is quite a tricky one to actually explain. Um, I'll do my best to not fuck this up. Both teams, <laughs> both hero and villain, both have loads of hands, Right, like technically big blind three bets, loads of combinations of like um, suited hands um, as well as calling them. The small blind also calls uh, is more incentivized to call and um, and continue with like suited hands as well. Both teams are gonna, excuse me, both camps are gonna have a lot of flushes here, so it's it's a tough one. Um, I'm just thinking, just remember in terms of like nut edge, right? The nut edge on this board is not aces. It's not kings, it's not queens, it's not ace-king. It's flushes and straights and sets. That's the king. That's king of the hill on this board texture, okay? So, for example, if you said to yourself, oh, well, I've got aces here. Uh, I, I want to protect my hand. Um, I'm going to go big here and try and protect. No. No, 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 no. You, you can have, like, even if you had, like, a set of nines, for example, okay, you, do, you you don't go into this you don't go into this shell where you're saying, oh, I need to protect my hand. Even if you had a set of nines here, No. Okay, so like even with flushes, right? You need to protect all of these other hands. Like you just got like ace queen offsuit, for example. You got ace queen of diamonds. You don't want to just to start sledging on this board. Okay, like you'll actually do shit tons of checking just because the, like you just have so many of these nutted hands that have missed this board completely. Even though all your one pair hands have missed this board completely, your range is very wide, very aggressive, and less condensed than the small blind. You really completely handcuffed to absolutely checking loads, like, I don't know, at least half the time, maybe more, probably more. And then if I was gonna choose a size that I wanted to bet for value, for a bluff, equity denial, whatnot, I would go very small. I would go very, very small, like less than the third. Like, I don't know, probably between 10 and, I don't know, 10 and 20%, something like that. I, I I couldn't ever see myself going big here. I couldn't ever see myself going half. Even if I had something like ace four of spades, um, I mean, I would absolutely be betting that, but I'd be betting it small. Um, and remember, this is only the flop C betting strategy. We're not looking at later streets. Like you just kind of set yourself up for a spot where if you bet big here, you kind of bin yourself. So it's like, you would just bet small and often. Maybe exploitatively, there's argument for if you have it, like you've got you flop flushes, you flop sets, and so on, to maybe go for like half pot, three quarters, just to get value. But again, like even if you have a set, even if you have a straight, like a straight's kind of awkward because you've got no redraw if you if you've got no spade. Whereas a set, at least you've got a redraw versus like flushes. Even if you've got small to medium flushes, your villain still has tons of like nut flushes and loads of loads of combos. The, what I'm saying here is the king of the hill on this board texture is sets and straights and flushes. And like the big blind does a lot of flatting with like sevens and eights and nines. And um, it, it doesn't always three bet. Like, you know, a lot of our three bet range is strong hands and bluffs. So in terms of this connection, the small blind is going to do very well here and we're much wider than them. So very, very small, but loads of checking. Tons and tons and tons of checking. Okay, so that's basically that. So those are the, that's that that's that for all these scenarios. Again, going back to um, just an evaluation before we finish, okay? I appreciate that this has gone on for longer than I wanted to. This is now nearly 55 minutes. Oh my God. Go back to, um, G if you have it, go to GTO Wizards have a look at that, consider getting it, look at the um, trainer, look at the aggregated reports, um, look at how you can, you know, look at the range versus range and use that in your studying. Like that's that's the way you will improve. That's the way you can actually self-study hands. Try and think about, I'm just looking like through some of these previous slides as an evaluation. Remember, start thinking about who's got the biggest, who's got the best hands. 
Who's got a bigger range of hands that interact with the board? Who's got loads of trashy hands here that don't interact? What does your range kind of want to start doing? What kind of sizes are available to you? What do what value do you get? Like what what is the purpose of betting small? What's the purpose of betting big? What are you targeting with your small size? What are you targeting with your large size? Do, do you see what I'm saying? Like you need to start thinking about all of these whys rather than just the what's. You want to get out of mentalities where you're just like, I've got pocket eights. This is the board. This is what I want to do. And you need to start thinking about what does my overall range kind of want to do and start thinking about strategically how to play the hands rather than just your own hand. Your hand is part of your range and you will play your hand in a, in a way that your range, you know, you've got like your range will overbet and check most of the time. You'll say to yourself, right, I've got a hand here that kind of doesn't really benefit from betting. It, you know, it could do with some protection, but I don't want, you know, I, I don't think it's good enough to bet for value. So I'll probably check with it. Whereas you've got a hand that, right, clearly a bluff here. I've got 10 high, I've got a backdoor flush and straight draw. I might bet with this. Do you see? And I might choose a larger sizing if I'm able to. Do you see what I'm saying? If, you, if you're if you able to just bet range because you've got such an advantage for a small size, then bet your entire range for a small size. Don't make, you know, do you see? Like, if you, you need to start thinking about all these positions and, uh, sorry, all the whys um, rather than the whats and all these spots and positions that you find yourselves in. So go through this presentation, have a look at, just go back and have a look at all these slides that we've gone through. I really hope that this has gone into your heads. I know there's so much information that's gone through on this presentation. I was ridiculous amounts. And I, I appreciate that. Um, and I feel very sorry for you guys looking at this at home. If you if you have got through all this, well done to you. Um, really, really well done. Um, again, just to finish, like in the description below is the DJ Wizard, the previous links to part one and part two of the video series, my Twitch information, uh, Discord, everything is in there. Take it out, ha have a look, check it out. Um, please like and um, thumbs up, thumbs up, and uh, leave a comment on the um, channel. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Get subscribed now. At least half of you are still not subscribed. That look at these videos. Come on, press a button. Help, help a brother out. Right. Talking aside, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.